Music was very important in the Washington household, and specifically to Nellie, because she was a keyboard player, she was able to entertain the important guests that Washington had, such as members of Congress, but also for the family, who seemed to all appreciate music very much. Nellie Custis was playing the harpsichord um, from a very young age. She probably played both harpsichord and piano interchangeably because they both existed at the same time. And the music itself was often labeled for harpsichord or piano. When Nellie Custis moved with the Washingtons to New York, Alexander Reinagel was her teacher and he was one of the most prominent musicians to come to America. And in fact, he was her teacher in New York and then later in Philadelphia as well. When I first arrived at Mount Vernon, I didn't really know exactly which pieces she would have studied or even the nature of her technique, because very often we might think um, an amateur playing music at this time how virtuosic were they? Um, Nellie, in fact, I now know, was well able to play the most demanding music. And the reason I know that is that I see her fingering in the pieces that she obviously studied and worked on. I also see the etudes that she was given by her teacher. And they're quite demanding. Also, at the top, there's a marking on one of them that says, to be practiced in every key. So I know how she was trained. I know she would have been able to play um, at great speed and lots of figurations. So she was quite, quite able to play, I think, the most demanding music. What's really interesting about this time is that we might think of a harpsichord player or a piano player practicing solo music, but for the most part, that wasn't the case. Even though we do have sonatas for solo keyboard, a lot of what was happening in the parlor was playing of ensemble music that might have been heard in the theater or chamber music that might be intended for more than one player. And apparently Nellie was able to play these arrangements for many instruments all on one keyboard. So the keyboard was like a little orchestra in the parlor and could perform arrangements of solo music, ensemble music, and large orchestral music. Um, there was also a lot of vocal music being played. So we have singing, we have operatic arias, we have overtures to operas. So a lot of what would be considered popular music of the time. I've learned a lot about Nellie Custis from reading letters that she wrote mostly to her friend Elizabeth Bordley. And in them, you really get the impression of a very spirited young woman who enjoys her music. She would sometimes ask for specific songs that she didn't have that she would like to learn. She's expressed in the letters missing her friends so they couldn't sing duets together anymore and that she had to do all her singing solo. And she also describes teaching music to her pet parrot. So you get the impression of Nellie as a very spirited kind of musician who really loved her music but who also had a great sense of humor. Click the subscribe button below and the bell icon to get notifications for new videos about George Washington and behind the scenes work at Mount Vernon.